important aspect of NBC well, training is to yeah. test trainees for their proficiency. Any group of soldiers can be tested by using a variation of the round-robin type of testing procedure. It is called a round-robin because the test stations are located in a circular pattern. This procedure can be modified to meet the proficiency requirements of any group. There may be more or less stations, depending upon the scope of the test and the availability of personnel and land area. Although it is conducted by groups for administrative convenience, the test is designed to challenge and grade each trainee for his individual proficiency in response to an NBC hazard or problem. Gentlemen, we're here at NBC Warfare. The subject we'll discuss today will be the NBC proficiency test. The NCOs behind me will be your station operators. You are divided into groups. You will remain with your group throughout the test. The map shows six test stations. However, each man will be tested on only stations one through five. Gentlemen, it behooves you to attain the highest grade possible today. And remember that what you learn here today, in the case that NBC warfare is ever initiated, may save your life. Each station is located in an isolated area, beyond sight of any other station. It is manned by one or more cadre personnel, acting as station operators. The station operator must be thoroughly familiar with the function of his station, the equipment necessary, and the proper procedures for conducting the test. The approach to each station is marked by an appropriately identified staging area, where each group is assembled. Each trainee carries a score sheet containing his name, rank, and any other information deemed necessary. Okay, we're going to be going to the station one at a time. But first, I want to check your scorecards. Okay. Good. The score sheets are made up to conform with the number Good. of test stations. I want you to hold on to these sheets. When you come to each station, the operator will grade you on the spot. Your grades will be based upon the averages once you've completed all five stations. Is there any questions? Yes. What's the first test about? I can't tell you. Part of the test is to see how you react to surprise situation. But I will repeat what was said at the briefing. Always be alert in case of any NBC situation. First man ready. Let's go. Okay, Okay, you see before you a display of Stanag NBC warning markers. You will examine the markers and identify those which are correct. You have three minutes. Begin. It is important that the same instructions are read to each trainee. This assures a standard and objective test for each man. It is important that station operators do not deviate from the written text. Let me see. It's that one, oh, that one, and this one right here. Correct for five points. For another five point, explain what additional information should be written on the Stanag NBC marker and on what side of the marker it would appear. I guess it has something on the date. A maximum score is allowed for each of the stations using any arbitrary and point system. The time of the initial explosion. A value of 10 can be used. In addition, each trainee is graded promptly by the station operator, the who also informs the trainee of the correct answer to any question or Two problem points. he may have answered incorrectly. Your score for this station is 7 points out of a possible 10 points. Why, Sergeant? You should have included the date and time, nature of hazard, and it would be written on the front. Sergeant, did I flunk? It's not a matter of flunking, it's a matter of testing your overall proficiency, and that will be done after you've completed all five stations. Go to the next waiting area and wait until all members of your group have completed this station. Next man! It is important that trainees know when they are right, and when they are wrong in each test, and that all incorrect responses be corrected before leaving a test station. You see before you a display of Stanag NBC warning markers. 
You will examine the markers and identify those which are correct. You have three minutes. Begin. A guide's responsibility is to make sure the group stays together and moves from one station to another according to plan. He must refrain from discussing the tests and maintain an objective and detached so attitude. what's this test all about, anyway? Saving questions for later. At the end of this exercise, you'll find out what your scores are. Remember, this is not a game to see who wins or loses. You only compete against yourselves. The same objective methodical procedure is carried out at each of the test stations. On the table before you is an M17 series protective mast. Assume that you have just been issued this mast. Inspect it carefully and state what defects are present, if any. You have three minutes. Begin. Each station operator must be equipped with a stopwatch or watch with a sweep second hand in order to time the test. By setting a time limit for each test, the trainee is confronted with the urgency of quickly responding to the NBC hazard and the test exercise is kept moving. The optimum time allowed to each trainee is one of the facts which is determined by pre-testing. Sergeant, your eyelids out, sir, is missing. Your head harness is okay. Your nose cuff has been unbuttoned, and your nose cuff valve is missing. Outside of that, everything else is okay. Your score is now 10. Accurate Don't record keeping is essential for We're testing to be done authentically and impartially. For the same reason, each station operator must himself be proficient in the NBC equipment and techniques used at his station. This is another factor determined during the planning and pre-testing phase of the exercise. All right, send the next man in. Advanced preparation and tryout are also necessary to assure that all test equipment or props are available and that each test is entirely workable within the allowable time limit. Some tests may require more than one station operator as well as specialized equipment to create realism. For example, a simulated nuclear attack can be presented in a dramatic manner by two station operators and a few simple props. I think you were a little too fast. Give the next guy a little time to wonder what's happening and then blast it. Okay, I'll wait 30 seconds longer before I hit the switch. All right, stand by. Send in the next man. Your unit is bivouacked during a breaking combat. Although there has been no enemy NBC attack, your unit has been alerted to such a possibility. Look over this terrain. To your left is your foxhole and to your rear is a ditch. You will sit down on the edge of your foxhole facing me and begin to strip and inspect your weapon. Continue to do so until you experience a hazardous condition. Each test must be designed to bring about a desired response to a question or a problem. In this case, the test subject will be suddenly exposed to the simulated flash of a nuclear explosion. The desired response is for the trainee to take immediate protective action. He has been alerted to an NBC hazard, but he does not know which hazard it may be or when it may occur. What was that? It could have been a flash of a nuclear detonation. You can come up now. Why did you jump into the foxhole? I jumped into the foxhole to protect myself from flash burns. And because it was the closest cover available. What would you do next? I'd remain in the foxhole until a flat shockwave has passed and flying objects have stopped. And next? i dust myself off and put my weapon back together. Anything else? Let's see. I would um, check out all my equipment 
and continue my mission. Although each trainee may use different words in response to the same questions, the station operator must be capable of objective evaluation and scoring each man on the basis of his evident proficiency. I'm giving you eight points out of a possible ten. Why, Sergeant? Because you failed to recognize the flash of a nuclear detonation. Pick up your gear and move out to the next waiting area. Next man! Hold out your hand. Oh Proficiency God. testing can be made both interesting and meaningful when individuals are directly challenged with an NBC problem. You will assume that in passing through the brush, you have contaminated your hand with BX. Demonstrate what action is necessary for you to avoid becoming a casualty. A problem like this confronts the trainee with an immediate decision. What protective action should he take first? Decontaminate his skin or put on the mask? The station operator must, of course, know which action should come first and why. Obviously, the trainee should first mask then use the decontamination kit. He will not pass this test, but he will be told the correct answer and why. Do I have to wait the whole minute? No, ignore all time for this test. I'm going to give you five points out of a possible ten. You should have put on your mask before you used your kit. By adequate pre-testing and planning, the entire test can be carried out smoothly and efficiently, with each group ready to pass through a station as soon as it has been cleared by a preceding group. You will assume that you are in a patrol and that intelligence has stated that an NBC attack is probable. You will continue down this trail and take whatever protective action is necessary if you encounter an NBC attack. Begin your patrol. Damn. The number of stations and types of tests are entirely arbitrary and may vary from an elaborately staged nuclear blast to a simple problem in efficient masking. In any event, each test must require a specific response to a specific problem in NBC proficiency, usually within a limited time frame. In addition, each separate response should be given a definite value in scoring. One single test may be scored for full value, or it may be divided into increments, which total the full value. This decision is made by the test supervisor. Good. I'm giving you 10 out of 10. I'm going to keep your score sheet. Go to the rest of your group. No matter how many stations are involved, all NBC proficiency testing should be followed by a general critique. This should be planned to take place as soon as possible while the test taken and lessons learned are still fresh in the minds of both trainees and station operators. Overall, you did well on the test. As a unit, you would be able to survive an NBC attack and continue your mission. But some of you would have become casualties and may have died. And I believe that each of you is aware of any mistakes or errors he may have made. Now is the time to clear up any doubt you may have as to your ability to survive an NBC attack. If not, speak out, ask questions. You have a question, Private Slater? Sergeant, we didn't have anything about a biological attack. Does that mean there is less chance of having a biological attack than a chemical or a nuclear attack? 
Good question. The answer is no. If an enemy resorts to a chemical or nuclear attack, he is just as likely to initiate a biological attack. You would respond to a biological attack by immediately masking, buttoning all clothes, using insect repellent, and avoiding all foodstuffs which may have been contaminated. We did not include a biological problem because we did not have time. Any other questions? Sergeant, we know how to decontaminate the skin, but how about the eyes? How do we decontaminate them? That's also a very good question. I'm glad you brought it up because there's a lot of people here that may not know the answer to that. You can damage your eyes if you don't know what you're doing. The simple thing to do, if you get contamination in the eyes, take your canteen, unscrew the cap, lean your head over to the side, and flush the eyes with water. Any other questions? If not, student sergeant, take charge of the two. Formation, gentlemen. Formation. Falling on you. Periodic NBC proficiency testing is important for two reasons. One, it provides unit commanders with an objective method of evaluating the efficiency of NBC training programs. And two, it provides the individual soldier an opportunity to develop confidence in his own ability to respond effectively and efficiently to some of the practical problems in coping with the hazards of nuclear, biological, or chemical warfare.